prescription glasses today, so I'm gonna have some actual. And I found out something I already knew, but that, that it's really pretty noticeably bad that should make the real glasses better, which is my eyes are different. But um, anyway, so my uh, six year anniversary of my YouTube channel is coming up on August 2nd, and um, I, to me it's, it seems like uh, a completion of a cycle to me, like, I'll replay this video in a bit next few days or something from, I believe, five years ago, around when I coined the term for myself, relativistic skepticism, and uh, that's really what I've been doing here, is going through a philosophy that basically I figured out by the time I was 22, 23. Um, and since then I've you know, I've learned other things, but none of these foundational things in the epistemology have changed, and it's possible because I haven't let them, because really I've just been using them. But then I've come online with this long 30-year hobby, and, you know, I give people the chance to to tear them down, and that uh, the, well, all I've ever been shown is that I confuse people with one way of putting it rather than another. So my philosophical year zero is definitely uh, when I was uh, 12, I would say, a particular day, pretty recalculated today to figure out what it was. And because uh, I might have said 13 or 14, but that's because I associated you know, this partially with the online conversation stuff I started. But it, it, was, it was 12 and I'm walking along and I was wondering, you know, why people, they tease me, and not in a negative way, but I mean family members and stuff, and just because I like talking about these crazy things and what tied them all together, what, what was the similarity? Now, I understood the phenomena because I just love nothing more than staying up late uh, with either of my two grandmas and we talk politics and philosophy and new age religion and re reincarnation and ghosts and, um, just all kinds of things. And I remember, uh, and my dad was real philosophical, and but I didn't really know of the idea of philosophy for it, and would that be appropriate? A lot of people would, uh, you know, not include things like reincarnation in philosophy discussions, though that itself is a sign of a, a dogmatism when you... Well, anyway, that's another video I was thinking about that is related to this. But to stay on topic here, um... So in the question I realized that I've been asking all of these other questions is, uh, to me, I felt like I could sum it up as a single question that I decided to work on, and every day since then I've continued this very same project. And that is trying to figure out what is reality. And, and on the walk itself, I realized that it was really the first question when you're asking what is reality, is what does the question what is reality even ask. And you have to get his various senses. You know, there's reality uh, when somebody says, this is the reality of the situation. There's, if somebody says something is um, real or not, if they think it's real. And there's when they say, you know, uh, the horse um, uh, was riding the small boy then what is what are they really talking about? The images in their head, reality, how do these all map? And basically there's parallel terms for things that are phenomena of the sense, the noumena that are supposedly behind them, the, the um, concepts that we get from all of this. You know, they all wanna borrow a same framework, an analogous set of terms and a lot of bad reasoning comes because we'll take, you know, term three from this column and term one from here and term two from here and it's not coherent. And you need to keep clear on what you're talking about and to do that uh, first helps everything else. So um, I pretty much developed that until I went off to, uh, to college. Uh, around 13 I got online and uh, 14 by 14, I had my own computer full as a daily hobby. Ever since, except for I, I moved out of the city once and it, still pretty much an everyday hobby. Um, 
And I was thinking, I didn't get in any flame wars in those days. I was pretty much, I, I, I might have bugged people every once in a while as a kid. But I don't remember, I remember discussions and uh, finding out what other people thought and no uh, real flame war stuff. And then I went away to college and when I got back into new f forums and discussion groups, FidoNet, um, you know, then a lot of flame warage started to commence. As I told the world, the many ways in which it was obviously stupid, not that I was wrong. Um, and I learned a lot that way. I battled uh, anti-tax libertarianism, I battled grammar Nazis, I did a lot of different groups that I partook in. And then around 22, 23, um, both online and in my regular life, I decided I liked, you know, I, I just decided to expect less from people. And instead of having the attitude of people are just idiots and in denial, I started realizing that people, I still always sort of believe everybody's equally smart, but some people spend a lot of their thought power on lies and stupid thoughts and things that are useless, you know, and, and it makes them seem stupid because they don't have enough brain left over. And I changed to realizing, well, obviously that can't probably literally be true, so let's just assume people are doing their best and I'm here in the middle of history. It's not the end of history. I'm not supposed to demand everything was already solved yesterday because I'm here in the middle of history. Um, and, uh, and then I had various cycles from that. I talked for about five, four or five years on the New York Times forums, uh, mostly in the end um, about the Microsoft antitrust case. I political blog, which involved a lot of real world stuff. I mean, that's when I met George um, Lakoff and a bunch of politicians. I went to the Yearly Coast, which was the first uh, convention those guys had. Before he banned me from his website for just a little bit of yellow journalism where I post. Anyway, it's a long story. Not a very long story, it's just not that particularly interesting either. Um, but if you ever want the dirt on Marcos Mulitsis, I will tell you how it his little brain works. Um, anyway, uh, so I kind of feel like this is a completion, not just of this period at YouTube, it's sort of like it's a complete circle. You know, like the last six years, I just repeated the time from 12 years old to 18 years old, where I was just kind of like, hey, here's what I think. And you know, in that case, it was from the prehistory of my philosophy, all these conversations with my dad and mom and grandparents, uh, grandmothers, I should say. And, uh, and the next stage was sort of a rise of the dragon, the wastelands must be laid kind of a period. And that, that's sort of where I am again. I think I'm like full circle had started over again. Um, and I'm at the step two. So during this period um, where I was was just uh, laying waste to the wastelands, I, uh, I was also going to, to Berkeley and taking physics and math and eventually philosophy and, and getting into philosophy. Um, and I was noticing a theme that was bugging me about eventually about all of my coursework, which was this air I've talked about before, which I identified as an air of being. Things are always in flux. And this air turns out, I think, is stored in language where all philosophy is stored and in the verb to be, but also harder to realize in the verb to do, which seems in contrast, but to be and to do work together because it's things that are, that do, allegedly. And this, uh, the, we're, I was learning more from physics that that just wasn't quite true, that everything was somehow an action, that there were no entities, because every time you look at an entity and you think you have an entity, you can always break it down. So that showed me that this essentialism of thinking you had a thing in itself was something in the mind that the verb to be is a good verb, but you're talking, when you say, you know, that is a dog, what you're saying is, hey, 
the phenomenon I'm pointing at is a dog, and the dog thing is in your head because if you look at the at the noumena by interacting with it and get the phenomena that are coming from your interaction with it, you can always decompose things into systems, always. So it looks like a thing is an illusion, and everything is somehow action. Everything is energy. Energy is material action. And this essentialism is all in this faith and the verb to be, and I see it all over the place. People want to judge whether a man is good or bad, and what they really have to do is judge whether those actions are good or bad. At least confusion, this confusion about being and things in themselves is, is ubiquitous. And I was railing against that, and then I got over railing against it. Now what I've done is I have formulated, so I did this whole cycle unformulated, uh, now have formulated it. And all the way to that is to publish, you know, the formulated notes. But many of the t much of the terminology and stuff, I now consider at least uh, uh, benefiting from the start of formalization. Right. So the first one was unformalized, but I figured it out. Then I went and used it. And now I'm going to use the formalization. You know, it's like you can't not look at the data and pretend you're equal talking to somebody that does look at the data. Okay. I'm not the only one that looks at the data. And you're certainly not the only one that doesn't. 